So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and in this video I had my fire alarms chirping at me. Now usually when this happens, you just slap a battery in it and you're good to go. However, I'm going to go over a different chirp I had, why it was happening, I put batteries in it, didn't fix nothing, and just found out something that I didn't know about these things. So let's get to it. So I ended up making a little test harness so I could plug this in just to an outlet and show you guys a couple things on these. I'm going to show you what the different chirps mean and how I diagnosed what I had going on with mine. Now keep in mind this is for this first alert fire carbon monoxide alarm and it may be different depending on the model or brand of the alarm that you have. So right here I've got it plugged into my test harness and you'll see the green light is on. The green light basically tells you you have 120 volts going to it and you'll notice it does not have a battery in it but you still have the green light because it does have that 120 volts. So since I've got the battery pulled out, it's basically sensing a low battery voltage and it will chirp one chirp every minute. And it will do that until you replace the battery. So always have a couple nine volt batteries on hand, ready to go. Cause if your luck's anything like mine, it's gonna happen at one o'clock in the morning on a work night. So if you end up having a hard time putting the battery in, it's most likely because you've got it in the wrong direction. They will only go one way. So if you are struggling, flip it over and it should go right in without a problem. Now I'm gonna let you listen to the code I was getting, which was five chirps every minute. And that's basically telling you that this alarm is at the end of its life. And here's what that's gonna sound like. Now keep in mind, before messing with anything electrical, it's always a good idea to shut the electric breaker off that would power those fire alarms. And an easy way to do it would be shut them off one by one if it's not labeled and see which one shuts that green LED light off on the alarm. I did not do this for this project, but if you get a little tickle, don't say I didn't warn you. Once realizing it was not a battery that was causing that chirping, I decided to switch that alarm with one that was not chirping in the other part of the house to diagnose whether it was the alarm that was the problem or the wiring at that location. Knowing what I know now, this probably wasn't necessary because once I found out that five chirps meant it was at the end of its life and I had the green light on the fire alarm, this wasn't necessary. But I do feel this is a good diagnostic just in general to switch something to something known to be good to see if it is the problem or possibly wiring, etc. I'm gonna show you guys how to disconnect and take these alarms down on the counter because it's a lot easier than showing you up on the ceiling. All you have to do to remove this is twist it counterclockwise and it will pop out. Once you get that out, hopefully there's enough slack in your wires where you can kind of pull it down a little bit. And then using a small flathead screwdriver there's a little tab right here and all you have to do is stick a screwdriver in there kind of leverage it out and that will disconnect just like that so once I disconnected this one I went and grabbed one that wasn't beeping in the other side of the house and basically switched them the five chirps went to the other location telling me that my wiring was good and I did have a bad alarm there is one other chirp or warning that you might get and that is three chirps every minute. And if that happens, it's a malfunction with the alarm and you might be able to take a blow gun with compressed air or a can of dust off and blow out the sensor right here. And that might correct your issue. I did this before condemning my alarms just to see if it would make a difference and it did not. And that's when I ended up ordering a three pack of new fire slash carbon monoxide alarms on Amazon. If you do end up having to buy some, make sure you look at all the pictures to make sure your electrical connection is the same. So it's just plug and play. On mine, the model number was clearly stated on the backside of the alarm. I entered that number in the Amazon search and immediately came up with the correct one. So my new alarms came with batteries already in them with just a piece of plastic to pull out. As soon as you plug that in, it's going to do a kind of a self test. And then I went ahead and pressed the test button as well to make sure that it was working. 
by checking that, that's telling me the battery is connected good and it is working off the battery backup. Now we're gonna go ahead and put it on the ceiling and test it again. Since I did purchase the three pack because it was more cost effective, I ended up changing all the ones over by my daughter's rooms and that side of the house. So here's a view of me changing one just so you can see how easy it was to do. Each one of these three alarms took me less than two minutes to do. Some of them were a little bit more of a pain because I did not have as much slack in the wiring. And I went ahead and pressed the test button after each one to make sure they were working. After doing a little bit more research about these, I learned that when a fire happens, you're gonna get three beeps, a pause, and three beeps. And when you have a carbon monoxide alarm, it's gonna be four beeps, pause, four beeps. In all honesty, it probably doesn't really matter because the reaction to both should be get the fuck out. When you press the test button, you will also see the red LED flashing and that is the carbon monoxide alert. Another thing I learned during this process is that the life expectancy of these first alert carbon monoxide fire alarms is about eight years. And it just so happens that I've been in my house eight years and we did buy it new. So I guess it is what it is and it's part of being safe around the house. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good information. If so, hit like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got all kinds of DIY projects, all with the same concept. Don't waste your time and help you save money by doing it yourselves. Hope to see you next time. Later.